welcome to all the new viewers. Please subscribe. My name is John Disk, and this is another award-winning pull video. There you go. All right, what do we got? We're up and down this table so many times I lost count. Um, we got some serious issues to start here, and. Begins with this one ball. Now, I really didn't think this through enough. I was more concerned with getting around this four, behind this four. We're going to have to spin this in. We're going to have to draw a little bit to increase the angle to come back down on this two ball. But you'll see where I goof up here. And the three is just a couple inches from the hole. It should be easy enough to get back up on the four. Uh, five is another problem. We're going to need an angle off the four to come off this rail without hitting the seven, without hitting the six, and getting back on the five. Six is in the center of the table. Five to the six shouldn't be a problem as long as I get. I need to stay away from this side, of course, on the 5. As long as I do that, it should be easy enough to get up on the 6. From here, the 7 is a bit of a problem. Uh, it does go by the 8 in this corner. So, the issue is, do we get high on the 7 or do we get low on the 7? Do we shoot it in this corner, or do we shoot it in this corner? If we get too much of an angle on the 7, it's going to be, we're going to have to go two rails to get back on the 8. And from there, um, we're going to need another angle on the 8 to get on the 9. So this is not an easy rack. It might appear to be an easy rack at first glance, um, but it's not. Let's get on with it. Yeah, I'm going three rails on this on this one ball. And right now, where I'm pointing my cue, I'm looking for the angle coming off this rail. And what do I have to do to get behind this four ball? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So it's spun, and I get back down table, and that looks good until you see the end result there, which is not good. And here's where a whole lot of players make a mistake, and this is a mistake that the pros never, ever, ever, ever make. Um, you can see I'm bad on the two. So how are we going to get back on the three when the cue ball is going this way naturally? You're going to have to cut this two in the corner. Or you could play safe, I suppose, but it's not my style. Makes for a really bad video, too. I tried it one day and I was not happy with the video. It was not entertaining. Um, it was educational, but it was like sitting through English class, you know. Or some... some grade school class you didn't like. Anyhow, um, don't let me get off rambling. Just smack me upside the head and say, get back on the damn subject. Anyhow, here we are. Um, yeah, it would have been better off hitting that a little bit lighter and just using the spin to get back down the table and leaving it right here. In fact, I would have been perfect. If I just left the cue ball right here, just slow down anywhere in here, instead of going all the way down to the rail. But here we are. And what an amateur will do, and even good players I see doing it all the time, is they'll cut this cue ball loose trying to get back on the three. And they'll try everything to get to try to get perfect on the three when you don't have to be perfect on the three. It's okay if you come up here. The three is still very makeable. I mean, it's not as easy as it's going to be straight in, but you need the angle anyway to get back on the four. So instead of doing a whole bunch of crazy shit, if you try to go four rounds on this, um, you, be you better really know what you're doing because you put left-hand English on this, 
and it's going to spin the cue ball. You don't want to put left hand English on it. If you put right hand English on this two ball shot, it's going to spin the cue ball counterclockwise, right? Right? And when it hits this rail, it's going to start dying, and it's still going to have counterclockwise English on it, and when it hits this rail, it's going to completely die, and you're going to wind up behind the four ball. Now, if you're really, really good at this, even if you could go three rows, you're coming on, you're coming back on the wrong side of the three, but you would have to go five rows, right? One, two, three, four, five, and bounce back like this. Just to get straight in on the three, and again, you don't have to, you don't want to be straight in on the three. We have to get back down table on this four. We're going back and forth and back and forth. So just wuss it up and take the little bit more difficult shot on the three. It's still an easy shot. Right? So now we have to decide what side to get on the six ball, the path. The six ball is a glaring, you know, beach ball in our way here. So we could come up under the six, or we could go over the six, or we could put a whole lot of left hand English on it and come off this route. But chances, if you do that, chances are you're going to hit the six. So let's just come up on the far side of the six and just kind of shoot for center table there and we're good to go. Um, but we need an angle on the four ball to get back on this five and we're going one round and avoiding, uh, avoiding the six ball again. That six ball is becoming increasingly more problematic. Bottom left here. And that's perfect. So now I'll just add a little bit of top here to come off this rail, and uh, yeah, we never made it to that rail for some reason, but that's what I was shooting for. And now we're coming up behind underneath the seven ball to shoot it in this corner. I decided that that's, we have more margin of error if we do that than trying to get in this window here between the seven and the eight. But, you know, being where the six ball is right now would actually be a good target. And then draw back and go two rails on the eight. But I didn't do it like that. I'm just putting a little bit of left hand English on this to come up underneath the seven and get as close to that rail as I can get, which I did. And now, because both the seven and the cue ball are pretty much frozen, I think they're both frozen to the rail. The only way to hold this cue ball is to jack up on it, and you want to stop the cue ball anyway for a shot. We can't bounce out, we're straight in. Um, so we're going to have to take, well, I'm thinking we're going to have to take a bit of a cut on the nine. But I do wind up with a slight, slight angle. But, but the plan was just go ahead and stop it, and then stop it on the eight, and just take, just shoot off the rail. For a hard shot on the nine, but I don't have to do that. I don't know how it bounced out of there, but straight in. But I did come out with a little bit. Oh, I got even. Oh, okay, yeah, I drew back. Um, I mean, it didn't come very far off, but I have enough of an angle to go down to this bottom round. And um, it looks like I didn't put enough left hand English or enough top on this to get the momentum to get a little bit closer to the nine because I still wound up with a long, you know, not easy shot here. These shots, every pool player knows this is not an easy shot. Um, to a newbie, this might seem easy, but it's not. Uh, what I've been doing, I've been working on my studio, and it's getting there, and we're green screening the walls right now. Oh, um, there's a good lesson for you. Let's go back over. I'm down on the shot, and I look pumped up, but something was off. Something was off balance. I, I felt my body move. Nothing on your body should move when when you shoot the ball except for this part of your arm, even your elbow, should stay up there at least until you follow through with the shot. Um, so I got off on rambling about the studio when I should have been talking about this here. 
something wasn't right. I was off balance. And I you see my body move slightly right there. Yeah, something wasn't right. It was probably my stance. Uh, I don't know. That's my stroke, because my body was moving, the stroke was wobbly. And I, you, you know, if you're an advanced player, that that's the kiss of death. Um, I can immediately tell a good player by their first shot and how wobbly they are their body's doing this or they're moving their bridge around or whatever they're doing. If anything except that their stroke arm is moving uh, on their body, they're not a good player. And they're never going to be a good player until they fix that. So make note of that. So I got back up, got more balanced, felt a little better, felt more relaxed, was breathing. Didn't have to worry about anything except following through dead center on this ball. Uh, a follow through is a major factor here. You don't want your cue flying up, that's for sure. And that's usually caused by dropping that elbow. Um, don't twist your wrist. Breathe, man. Breathe. Breathe. Tell yourself this is easy, man. You've done it all day, all night, every day for the past, I don't know, for as however long you've been playing. There it is. That's a good stroke there. Um, what's been going on? Um, the Turning Stone Classic was a heartbreaker for me. I wanted Earl to win for the old guys. Um, you know, I don't support Earl's annex sometimes, but He's still a fabulous pool player who doesn't get the respect he deserves. And um, I think it was time for the world, the pool world, to realize that. Uh, so, yeah, I watched every match that was streamed. Took some time off work and just to watch it. Uh, working on my studio, yeah, we're green screening, and a lot of photographers and video makers, they just put a cloth green screen back there, and this way they can, you know, play around with different backgrounds and stuff. Um, but I'm actually in the process of painting the walls that I want green screen, and um, that's taking up some time because there's holes that have to be patched where people hold pictures and stuff like that. So, you know, it's not just a matter of getting this expensive green screen paint, overpriced green screen paint, and, uh, and painting away, it's, you know, you got to prep it and you got to know what you're doing. So, yeah, it's not, it's not a paint party that I gathered with my friends to grab some five dollar Walmart brushes and get to town. This is a pro job. John. Uh, next video. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'll try to get to it in the next day or two. I'll be out playing and recording tomorrow night. So I'll be taking stock and up on some new videos. Uh, thanks you for tuning in. I don't take you for granted. I need you. Tell your friends, man. You all have pool player friends, and we all know, other than Jennifer Britta, I am the best pool instructor in the tube of you. Now, I have my own weird style, and some people like my style. And some people don't. Say lovey. I like having a smaller, more intimate mark. I like getting to know. You know, when you have a million viewers, there's no way in hell you're gonna you're gonna learn about each one of them and, and create a relationship with each one of them. But when you have fifty or hundred viewers, um, it's quite possible. You get to know their kids and they 
buy you beers and hang out and poke whitey and uh, enjoy life. Anyway, peace everybody. Good luck with your game. Keep practicing. You gotta work on